Hey, what's up guys? Default STI Vapor here, aka Dan. Spring is finally in the air and I felt like making a new video on my 2018 Pure Red STI. As you can see, I got it nice and cleaned up today. I always wash it myself because personally I don't trust any car washes. And that's how I honestly keep it looking good. Um, the clear coat on this car is sensitive, the paint is sensitive, and um, as I was going over that and checking out all the little rock chips I got in a short life of 8,000 miles so far, it made me realize this car isn't perfect. And although I could have told you that from day one, maybe I want to make a video of three things I love and I don't want to say hate, but dislike about my 2018 STI. Now ultimately, I truly do love the car. I've had it since brand new. I think the base model is more than enough. From inside and out, it's been a fantastic driver. I mean, between the all-wheel drive and crappy weather, rain, snow, the styling, the noise, it's just a blast to drive. I always look forward to getting in it. Even if it's just driving back and forth to work, um, I'm very content with it. That being said, no car is perfect. I've said that before. And I strongly believe even if you have a Bugatti, a McLaren, a Ferrari, a Porsche, these cars are all amazing. But I guarantee you, you could find a downside in every car. Whether it be fuel economy, even though it's a sports car, whether it be parts availability, aftermarket support, reliability, there's always something. So although this car is awesome, it's not perfect. And since I just detailed it and cleaned it today, I think the most fitting first thing to talk about is Subaru's crappy paint. Now, a lot of you are probably gonna agree with me because I hear this from a lot of people. Um, this affects all Subarus, it's not an STI thing. It's um, pretty much every make and model, as I could tell. Uh, the quality of the paint kind of just sucks. Um, maybe they didn't put enough layers of paint on, maybe they didn't put enough clear coat, but this thing gets rock chips very easily, and that kind of drives me nuts, because as you could tell, I'm very anal with my cars. Um, I deliberately keep my distance from other drivers. I try to stay multiple cars apart, but I always find new rock chips on my front bumper, hood, and even fenders. And that pisses me off, because I go out of my way to try to keep my car clean, but I still manage to get hit. So let me just show you guys. Bear with me while I try to focus. There we go. That was my very first one. I almost lost sleep that night. I just took home my car. And, um, come on, zoom. I found this, and I was like, you son of a bitch. Not only did the thing hit once, but it looks like it skipped and hit again, so, sick. And, um, as the months went by, you know, I, I started to discover more and more of these. Come on. Yeah, this camera can only do so much to um, zoom in on it, but trust me. It's here. There we go. Come on. So, I'm not going to go crazy showing you guys every rock chip, but trust me, they're here. And this is from somebody who drives um, pretty responsibly, keeping their distance and really trying to stay away from other people. But... My point is, even on a car with only 8,000 miles, and from somebody who drives and takes their time and keeps distance, it's paint chips very easily. Like I said, it could be a factory thing. Subaru's cheaping out. They're just using crappier paint. Um, it looks good. It's got a beautiful shine, a beautiful gloss, and I keep it clean. It's just that maybe they're not using enough clear coat because if you don't detail this, if you don't polish this, even from the factory, I had clear coat blemishes on it. I had a few um, light scratches, but I polished it out. And right now it looks good, but I just cannot prevent the paint from chipping. Now there are ways to remedy this. You could obviously just get it repainted. You could use Dr. Color Chip, which I've never used, but I heard it's um, pretty good. Or you could just get a clear bra from the get-go that's what i should have done but i i didn't realize till after the fact so personally if it gets bad i'm gonna uh get it reshot get it blended nice and then clear bra it just uh food for thought now another example is if you see i have one ding on this car 
Just one. Hang on, let me switch sides. So right there, as you can see the nice little swirl because the reflection's beautiful and you can see the clouds. Looks like a little cyclone there. I was driving one day with my fiance and uh, it's a windy, shitty day and acorns are falling off the tree at full time and out of all the fucking spots for the acorn to hit lands right on my roof. So that left the one and only ding on my car. You know, it pissed me off on that day, but it's on my roof, it could be worse. It's not on the door and uh, it's the only one, so I'll live with it. Now this brings me back to the paint thing. I work at a dealership and we have a paint removal guy and I told him about it and he said, um, he'll help me out, but I refused to glue pull it. And I said, oh, why is that? And he told me from experience, this guy does a lot, a lot of cars. He said, Subaru paint is so shitty that when I've glue pulled dents like that before, it rips off the clear coat in the paint. Not not a hundred percent of the time, but he said there's a good chance and he refuses to do it. He also mentioned he would, you know, pop down the headliner and bang it out from the inside, but you know, it costs more money. And um, he was the one that told me, yeah, it's just it's a Subaru paint thing. It's just not really up to par of you know some other high quality luxury cars, I guess you could say. So it drives me nuts, but like I said, it's it's a like because the bread's beautiful. Just look at that reflection. Uh, when it's cleaned up, it's absolutely stunning. But the quality of it, the durability, I should say, is kind of weak. So that's definitely um, a point of concern. If you're getting one of these new, <clears throat> definitely, definitely consider a clear bra for the front bumper and uh, the hood. It'll really protect it. It'll make a difference. And nowadays, they're so, they're so nice, you can't even tell that they're on the car. So that is it for um, my first dislike about my STI the second thing is this goes both ways too like the paint the second thing is the engine the EJ257 has been around for I don't know 15 years now it's been out since 2004 I believe and it's been making more or less the same figures 300 horsepower 300 torque give or take it's gone up it's gone down a little it's a bad thing because they haven't changed it people complain about it but it's a good thing because it's a good thing because it's that's still a good amount of power for today's day and age and a lot of people complain on the forums that thing's got a dinosaur engine. They haven't changed that thing in years. That is true, and I agree with that to an extent, but at the same time, look at the competition. GTIs, Hyundai Ns, um, Civic Type Rs. These things are making the same amount of power at most, if not less. So does it really make sense to um, throw this engine under the bus when it's, when it's still making more horsepower than most of the competitors out there? That's why it goes both ways. I would like to see them update it. Um, we all know how easy it is to get power out of these things. All it requires is a simple tune, so I'm sure Subaru could have done their own type of stage one and make it, I don't know, even 320 horse, 325, 330 would be nice. They're doing that with the new um, special edition STIs. I don't think it would be hard, but I'm sure they have their reasons. As we know, stage one with these cars are already pushing close to 100% injector duty cycle. So it could be an injector thing. They may have to put more money into the uh, the fuel system. It goes both ways. You know, I would like a slightly updated. It doesn't even have to be a new engine. It doesn't even have to be a new drivetrain. Slightly new tune on these things just to bump it a little above 310. That's it. So these are all things I could live with, but these are all things I would like to see improved. Um, the third thing on my list that also goes both ways. This is how you can tell I like the car. Although these are dislikes, I, I see the benefits in it without a doubt. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, I I'd probably take it how it is, and that's why I have this car. But the third thing is the um, new Brembos. Beautiful, beautiful calipers, beautiful brakes, six pistons. They look awesome on this car. A lot of people may not be fans of the color, but a lot of stopping power. Um, they just look mean, you know, it adds value to the car, but they're high performance brakes. So you're going to hear some noise 
and that's even with casual driving. If you don't press down hard on the brake pedal and you casually brake, which is 95% of the driving you're gonna be doing, you're gonna hear a noise that sounds like when you have low brake pads and the little metal indicator starts grinding against your rotors. That's what I hear pretty much every day when I drive. Doesn't matter the speed. I thought the temperature made a difference, but now it's warm again and I still hear it. So it's really just a Brembo pad thing. And um, like I said, I work at a dealership, uh, Dodge, Jeep, Chrysler, and I've seen a lot of Hellcats, a lot of, you know, Challenger equipped Brembos, Challenger, Brembo equipped Challengers, um, Trackhawks, etc. And they have these and a lot of people come in and they, uh, they complain, you know, I just spent $70,000 on this truck or on this Challenger or Charger and it's making noise. And um, they got to realize it's just the nature of the beast so sometimes they're replaced under warranty because um a high purchase like that justifies replacement someone shouldn't have to hear that but um that's it if you could live with that slight noise um you could you could get over it and you could enjoy the stop the extra stopping power and then the looks of the brembos so i would truthfully at the end of the day i, I would take better stopping power and the aesthetics of these cool calipers over some slight noise that's why I don't lose sleep over it but that's it that's three things that kind of kind of irk me about this car from the quality of the paint to the uh, non-revised engine to the brake noise but all things considered it's a sports car it's not meant to have quiet brakes um the paint thing i really can't justify but the engine thing i can justify it is all there it could use an update but it's still making good power for 2019 it's still making more or very close to its competitors power and it still feels quick i mean they made some minor updates to the turbo to whatever internals um to the intake and um even at stock, which I am, I just have a cat back on it. Um, TN coilovers, I got the wheels, but with just those mods, I have a blast driving it and I'm very content with it. Um, and we can always modify it, as you know, it's so easy just to plug an access port in and get a lot more power out of it. So that's really it. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree and uh, what you love and hate about your STI or WRX or Subaru. And let me know about the paint thing. I mean, I, from what I've read, from what people have asked me, I'm definitely not the only one. Uh, it happens, but let me know what you guys did to remedy it. And thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more content about STIs or Subarus, please like and subscribe. And let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.